should I tell everyone that I thought that we were getting engaged this weekend? That is so funny. I like. I, I wasn't gonna bring it up because yeah, I didn't know if you yeah. felt um, stupid. It's okay. You can say yeah, or you no, can say <laughs> no. I know. I just know it's a serious but sensitive topic. Let's go home. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. Masterclass offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the top of their field. This holiday, give one annual membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash wild today. That's masterclass.com slash wild. Terms apply. Well. 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 I, um, okay. Uh, we've said this maybe once or twice before, <laughs> but uh, we did a thing that is something that I think we're very proud of. Okay, and- hang on. Pause, 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 pause. What? Uh, the internet has now dubbed the quote, we did a thing or I did a thing as cringy and I can't unhear that sentiment, and now we, so we didn't do a thing, we did something. Okay. <laughs> Can we just glitch for a second there? <laughs> well, no, I, I, um, I'm open, I'm mm-hmm. open to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's put the much lesser topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll the, table lesser. that, we'll table that. Right, right, Go so ahead. forget Go what ahead. we did. Yes. Tell me what, tell me what, why it, it's a dick. Go ahead, <laughs> let's just start here. Let's... Why it's a nick? Yeah. Well, you know what it, I think? I think like the main overarching like topic of the, mm-hmm. and it was like things millennials need to stop saying or something like that. Or it was like, um, welcome to the holiday season. Here are the engagement captions that you're going to start seeing. And will people be engaged? Like we did a thing. Oh, that's terrible. That's I brutal. Hate that. Yeah, that's brutal. Just hearing that. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad. Right, you, you you hear it now, you hear it now, right? Yeah. yeah. As soon as someone had associated it with that, I was like, oh, I'll never say that again. And listen, I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Like we said last episode or two episodes ago or two weeks right. ago, one episode right. ago. I'm not gonna yuck your yum if you like saying, I did a thing, we did a thing. But now that I've I associated really it- enjoy- With the cringy engagement post. Yeah. I will no longer be doing a thing. We redid what I would like to describe as the vibe. We, no, Jeremy, you need to give yourself all the credit here because Jeremy has slaved away the blood, sweat and tears. The TLC that you have put into this set over the last week is truly incredible. I've been having Logmas spirals full time and Jeremy's just been spending, he's been holed up in the podcast room, making it look like this. And the vibes, dare I say, are immaculate. They're yummy, they're yummy. I'm yumming currently. I don't know if I love the word yum. It's not as bad as we did a thing, but the vibes are immaculate and the vibe uh, the vibe check has gotten increasingly higher. I feel like I should just smile and nod <laughs> because everything that comes out of my mouth apparently makes you dry up like the desert. Well, you know, oh, but like, can you see the engagement one now though? We did a thing. I am so upset that Everyone yeah. had to watch me learn that lesson that in real time. Yeah. Um, but uh, the vibe of the podcast room is much closer to what mm-hmm. I think the energy that we're going to be bringing next year <laughs> needs it to be. I know, just in time for us to take like our Christmas holiday break. You know, I here's a like, taste. Here's a taste yeah. of, of our next chapter. You know how like every other show, like they'll like tear it all down and like yeah. the big premiere is like the, yep. the first one. Mm-hmm. We're like, let's give away 80% of what people like are gonna come to back, back to us for. Yeah. And then we'll just end the season. But it's perfect. It's <laughs> perfect. Like, take a break. I don't I don't like seasons. Yeah, just take a little, take a little, take a little time off, take a little family time. Also, I love the period between Christmas and New Year's and that like first couple days in January where like you don't know what day it is. You don't know where you are. You like, it's like, have you showered in the last couple of days? You're wearing the same sweaters and stuff. The years? I love that part of the year. It's like uh, the gooch of the year if the gooch was the best part. Mm-hmm. Between Christmas mm-hmm. and New Year's Eve. Right. And I'll let gooch? you choose which one of those is sides. Which? Yeah. Or taint, huh. whichever one. Okay. Right? Um, it's like the Christmas taint or like the, the, the post-Christmas taint. Hmm. Post-Christmas gooch. Yeah, post-Christmas Pre-New gooch. Year's Eve gooch. Pre-gooch. Yeah. Wow. We are in transition. Def- no, that definitely is a transition spot. 
If that For doesn't sure. put the mental picture in, in your head. That then, you're, then I don't know. Then I don't know what. Right. You, yeah. So we're playing a little bit of uh, uh, time travel here because if you're on time listening to this, it's after Christmas. Mm-hmm. I don't know how far after Christmas. A few days. But we're currently on the 15th of December. Right. So the interesting piece is between <sighs> now and when this comes out, our parents will have met. Oh, God. 24 hours. Gifts will not be exchanged besides Lauren's predetermined- Ornament swap. Right. And the $16 gift that you got me. Yes. Um, thrilled about that. And not, not <laughs> upset. Uh, <laughs> not salty, not complaining. Okay, so I started off with being like, okay, it's under five hundred dollars, and yeah, then, we, all, we all heard that. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I I um I specified a little more and said that it was under three hundred dollars. No, you didn't specify. You revealed your lie. It wasn't a lie. And by the way, what I mean that would be like me saying like I spent less than a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, I spent sixteen dollars. Like t- t- technically true. That not that far off. You are exact. Do you want me to go? Do you want me to buy you just a dumb, a dumb expensive thing that you don't need? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly the what point I want. of Christmas. What? Yeah. <sighs> you don't need anything. Lauren, I'm not going to take. Yeah, but okay. I'm so easy. You could walk into Cartier. You know all my sizes and I wear gold and done. Yeah, easy. You done. wear a nine and a half ring. We know this now. We know this now. <sighs> this is why Jim and I will never do a thing on Instagram. <laughs> True. What if I told you we could get engaged, but you had to caption it? So we did a thing. I would really have to think about it. Okay. Really Circle back at the end of the pod. Yeah. Um, <gasps> Should I tell everyone that I thought that we were getting engaged this weekend? That is so funny. I like. I, I wasn't going to bring it up because yeah, I didn't know if yeah. you felt- um, Stupid? It's okay. You can say yeah. Or you no, can say- <laughs> No. I know, I just know it's a serious but sensitive topic. So and it's what you care a lot about. But you should definitely so, tell the story. When I was in Big Bear, um, I had a Remy got to watch this whole spiral live. Toph was still sleeping. Mia wasn't able to come to Big Bear this year, and Remy got to see the whole thing unfold live. So Jeremy, um, again, still upset that I spent six dollars on him on Christmas. He texted me. Oh, it's up to six now. And you said no. I six, thought it was like a gift card and you some said Amex points. Sixteen. Yeah, got it. Sure. So now we're down to six. Yeah. Texted me and said, um, okay, we're gonna do like an overnight thing for Christmas for your for the first part of your Christmas gift on the 17th, which would be the Saturday night and stay Sunday. And you're like, okay, yeah, so it'll be Saturday night, stay Sunday and up until Sunday evening. And I was like, oh, a little one nighter situation. Like that's odd and like kind of like weird and like not typical of our, even like a weekend getaway. I was like, okay, okay. So it was like, okay, like whatever, sounds good. And I gotta be honest, before I asked it, I go, sending mixed signals. Really? <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. You did think about like, it. I wasn't, when I heard you like spiled and forget about it, I wasn't shocked. Right, 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 right. And then in the same 12 hours, I got a text from my nail girl who rescheduled That's our- That's fr- okay, actually I forgot about that part. Well, this is the whole reason why right. I started having engagement spiraling. Yeah, but even when I was like, oh, asking her to go somewhere before the holiday, I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm- Setting in- yourself up for- I'm, I'm treading in very thin water yeah, here. Yeah, And then add this on top of it. So within 12 hours, my nail girl texted me and rescheduled our appointment. I think we originally had an appointment for like the 20th or something. And she made it for the 16th, the day before that we would leave. Because And I knew that you had Perla's number because someone had wanted to buy me a manicure for my birthday. So in August, I knew that you had her number. Jeremy did not save it because he's not proposing anytime soon. But okay, in I, my I, mind, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I just like, how am I getting? shit roasted for <laughs> another time when I was thoughtful and found like, it's like- No, oh. you're getting roasted, but I was just piecing together the pieces of the puzzle mm. that could potentially add up to like things being intentional. I wish I could, knowing that all this now, I wish I could yeah. have seen your face when, because when did I text you and like, I, I decided on something different? Well, oh, within two hours of all of this, this was a- this Oh, was, cause you texted me, we're like, so like how far are we going, whatever? Yeah, like, yeah, cause I asked like climate wise, like what are we thinking? Because Remy was like, so you're gonna go and revolve and buy something white to wear? Like, because you, you'll need to know the climate. Remy. We said, we told Tiff the same thing when we when we were when we like, were Remy, curious. have my back here. No, okay. So I know that Remy is a bad liar. And I like, I think another like dead giveaway is that Remy was like, no, like, I don't think it's happening. I think it's like, I think it's too soon. I think really? that like, I think that he just like, doesn't have this planned right okay, now. Okay, wait, hold on. Now I'm pissed. <laughs> because- She didn't believe in me? What? She didn't believe in she me? She didn't believe in you, no. She thought, she thought everything was too intentional that it, it couldn't be happening. I'll talk to her about this later. Yeah. 
if she didn't think that I could pull, if I, that I could pull this off. I'm reverse psychology right now to make Jeremy just do like a really elaborate intentional proposal. Mm. Mm. But yeah, she really didn't. She, and so the way that she was trying to like soften the blow of like it not happening, right. I was like, oh, this is a dead giveaway because if Remy did know and it was happening, she would not be acting like this. And she'd be a bad liar. Bad liar. Like, you'd be like, it would be sus no matter what she was trying to say. Like so, in whichever direction she was trying to go of like, yeah, it is happening or no, it's not happening. Try and throw me off. Like she, regardless, it would have been sus because Remy is the sweetest little baby bird and cannot lie. I will be honest. I don't. I told Toph, I was like, Jeremy will for sure not tell you. Uh, I'm gonna start there. I would not trust Tiffany. No. With her own secret. No. Um, let alone one of mine. Uh, she was so funny. She was like, what? He wouldn't, he wouldn't tell me. And she was like, I don't mean, I don't mean to say things. And we're like, no, I, cause it's like not, it's we, not out of bad intentions. So we're stopped right there. <laughs> yeah. We know, we know, know you don't mean to say things. I know. That's the issue. I know, I know. Yeah. So like, and also I've, I've heard like Tiff like divulge her own information. I was like, yeah. oh, like that probably, that should have been a yeah. secret. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's okay that we know that, but whoa. The point is Remy I'd be on the fence about. Yeah, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't tell Remy. Mia, I would be You can trust Mia with anything. Yeah, you can trust Mia with anything. I would call her about an engagement and if I needed to bury a body. For sure, you could call as, her for either. As, as, in the same time. Yeah, yeah I would mm -hmm. push come to shove. That would probably be my number one go-to. Yeah, I, I think Lana that would be great is, too. Lana as well would do both those things. Yeah. She's a ride or die as well too. But I feel like every girl's friend group Mm. has different players and different like strengths and weaknesses. Oh, for sure. Amongst the circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you don't know who is who, you're not close enough with them and you might want to, I don't know, have a communication Or you're going to learn the hard way when you um, need to bury a body and accidentally bring the person who tells secrets to the police. And someone to help connive an engagement proposal in the same week. Right, so then in that same, um, I'm honestly, maybe six minute minute period, Jeremy texted me and said, no, nah, never mind. Like your parents are coming on the 19th. Oh, so the other part of that was that my parents are coming on the 19th. So it's like, right. if we stayed somewhere overnight on Saturday night, Sunday got engaged, my parents are coming Monday. I was like, oh my God, that would be so magical and perfect. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, like one plus one plus one plus one is four and a half. The math do be mathing. I'm getting engaged. And then within kind of that same breath, he was like, "Never mind, just kidding." There's well, you so much were like, stuff. I literally, you were like asking me all about the weather and everything, and I thought about not telling you that it was off because I was like, "Okay, now I've like got mm -hmm. her excited." Yeah, and I was like, "She'll ask me nine hundred more questions." Yeah, if I don't just cut this off now. Yes. So I'm just gonna break the news. Yes. You know what my motto was that I think is actually. Um, um, Tell me your motto. Something that not my motto. By Ava Max. But what? By Ava Max. Yeah. I love that song. I know you do. A bop. I feel like you you really become your like inner rave girl Asian. Like uh, the motto. Yeah. Back to topic. Um, is that I need to go in with 0% expectations. But I mean, be, go in. Like if, if, if oh, you had an time. inkling. Yeah, if you, yeah. Had, if you had a little inkling, go in with 0% expectations, zero expectations, but 100% preparedness just in case. Got it. Okay. So like. But okay, but the problem with all this stuff is. Mm -hmm. Now you've been like, okay, cause like the nails, the, the dress, the this, the, yeah. the amount of things now that I'm either gonna have to pretend like I didn't think about or have to actually fucking think about. Well, this sounds like a you problem. It is a me problem, I'm yeah. complaining. Okay, okay, go ahead, sorry, <laughs> the you, have, you have the floor. <laughs> you've now highlighted that I'm supposed to now juggle. Okay, but you're really lucky in the sense that like one, I'm a delight. B blankets coming soon. Oh my God, the physical sample is on route to our house. It is, so. I saw the, a picture of the physical sample and it's amazing. When are we gonna release those? Uh, end of January, I think it's happening. Okay. End of January or everyone um, at Chris Vaccarino on Twitter and tell him- um, we are that we're, that we're mad with him. Yeah, I, exactly. Hey Chris. Um, uh, uh, so one, you're lucky because I'm a delight, but two, you're lucky because I like, because my hands are on camera so much for any kind of like DIY stuff, my nails almost always look good. Mm. And like, I would just hate well, okay. for, I would just hate for you to be in the position of like deciding that you're gonna propose like in the next couple of days and then your girlfriend having busted nails. I would really hate for you to be in that position. So don't worry. But like, and you're I, welcome. I already had you in the bucket of the nails are gonna be fine. Yeah. She'll wear something cute unless, oh man, actually that could be tough. You are. This is okay. And so this is why I was like, because, I'm not someone who just like looks nice on the regular <laughs> and I cannot be more straightforward about that. Like 
I I dress for comfort and I dress for climate. Lauren, Lauren is constantly getting out of eighth grade volleyball practice. Constantly. Like just the yeah. the oversized t-shirt. Mm -hmm. With Uggs and leggings. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what? You're getting out of eighth grade volleyball practice and it's cold outside, but right. you don't want to put pants on because it's too much work, but you have to run to your mom's car. So right. it's like a 55 foot run yeah. in your, your post outfit. volleyball practice. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Garb. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. So I think when the time <laughs> does come, you'll really have to think about like what the, uh, like Zach Corn Diddy, for example, had to propose to Maggie on his birthday celebration. He planned something for his own birthday and then proposed to her on his birthday because he didn't know how to like finesse an outing. Got it. Okay. And you'll have to finesse me into- Maggie is 10 times more go with the flow than you. Yeah. 10 times at least. Definitely. I'm gonna have to do this on like, I'll have, to, I'll have to do the proposal like at our wedding to make sure. That's why that I thought it was happening this weekend. Okay, well. So anyways, that was my, um, um, that was my viral. And I- I feel like I've actually learned a few things from this whole endeavor though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some things I don't, I wish that aren't now actively in my memory. Okay. But you know, hindsight's 20. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know what I wish came with a user manual? You. My brain. You. My brain. Mm -hmm. You. And, and me. Yeah. Sometimes I would like to just be able to open up that manual when my anxiety kicks in and just like hit that restart button, that control, alt, delete, that restart. And unfortunately that is not how it works. But something that can be useful is BetterHelp. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel very unsure. And whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or being a parent, therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of the challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of a complex engine called you. BetterHelp has been the MVP for me during my journey with anxiety. I call it a journey because some days it feels longer than others with hills. Sequels. And valleys yeah. and prequels and sequels <laughs> and all the things. But having better help on my side makes me feel just overall better. Therapy really can make something that seems to be taking over your life a little more manageable, which is why I want all of our Tillies out there to try it out. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash WT9. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash W-T-9. Our days of mandatory class attendance have been long gone, but with Masterclass, I found myself interested in going back to school, question mark? I know, a wild thought. Masterclass offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the top of their field and accessible on your phone, web, and smart TV. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long. That is like the absolute sweet spot for my attention span. I was just gonna say the thing. <laughs> With Masterclass, you, you, like, you learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. That's the key. You can hit pause. That, that They didn't allow pause to happen in school. I needed pause so I needed, bad. Yeah, I needed pause as well. You now, you now you get that button. You can learn how to write a song from John Legend or improve your cooking skills from Gordon Ramsay or learn the art of negotiation with Chris Foss, one of my favorites. And with over 180 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I just watched Kris Jenner teach the power of personal branding. And let me tell you, it was eye-opening. She is the queen of the Kardashian generation her empire and like she's she's got good she's got good ish to say and not only because i love the queen herself but getting to hear her talk about everything she knows about branding wise was so interesting there are so many different classes to choose from and 11 different categories you're bound to find something that piques your interest as well i highly recommend you check it out this holiday give one annual membership and get one free go to masterclass.com slash wild today that's masterclass.com slash wild terms apply One of the conversations I remember that I had when I was spiraling, I was like, oh my God, like, do you think that, like, I'm not someone who gets like, like basic white nails. Like, I, I feel like it's a thing 
it's a thing that like a girl did a thing where when she gets engaged, she like wants her nails to be like very basic. I'm not that kind of girl. I always have like crazy colors and patterns and like gems and glitter and shit like that. And like, I, I, I know I'm, I'm okay with that. But like, for example, there's this one YouTuber who had her engagement nails for six months waiting for her boyfriend to propose. Right. And it's funny bunny is like the engagement color. Like the, the stereotypical one is funny bunny. It's like, I think an off white color. It's like when like you go to the, like, ah, oh, could get eggshell for the wall. Yeah, yeah. Can I get, can I get, can I get funny eggshell? bunny? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And um, so my nail appointment that's coming up, I was like, oh, so I should just get fucking like cow print and glitter and checkered boxes because I'm not getting engaged this weekend. I'm gonna get the craziest nails ever. You could just do all five. Checkered, cows. Smiley. Smiley's. Cloud. Yeah. And stripes. I love that. Done deal. Oh, could you get Diggy's face on your nails before you get him on your body? I could. Could. I could. We'll see. So- uh, today is the 26th of December, if you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, what do you think, like if you had to guess, mm-hmm. right? Put mm-hmm. some money on the line. Okay. How did the last 10 days go? I think they're gonna be good. I think we're gonna be tired. Okay. I think we're gonna be tired. I think we're gonna be excited to just like have our space back. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Because also too, like, I, you know, you just have like your routines where you throw shit places and you don't unload the dishwasher in like the timely manner that you should when you've got five people in the house versus two. Right. Like- Fortunately, it, your mom's pretty good at like being like the automated like Roomba who goes around just like- Oh my God, yeah. Doing I mean, well, she's used to it with my dad and I. We just both yeah. are just like a, a walking Fucking bomb. Fucking yeah. tornado. I know, exactly. Through. And you know, she's she's very, I feel like you- The tornado that went through an Amazon warehouse. Oh, my you. favorite kind of warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> Me what? Um. Uh, oh, how we, like my mom's thing of like, touch things once. Yeah. Touch things once. Yeah. You well, know? I've actually changed my, going back and reading Atomic Habits again, mm-hmm. I've changed my perspective on that from like touch things once to, I'm not actually being lazy right now by leaving this year. Mm-hmm. I'm actually being lazy by not making more work for myself later. So I'm actually being more efficient right? Like it's easier for me to just Mm -hmm. do this now Mm -hmm. than it will be to do it later. Like I'm framing my like lazy, like bullshit of like, actually, if I do this now, then I won't have to do it later. And that's better for me, which of course is healthy anyway. But it's also been like, I'll do this later. It's like, no, no, that's not easier. Just putting this away now and not having 900 fucking mess over the place. Oh yeah. That's easier. Yeah. 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 Also, if you're picking something up to go move it somewhere near where it's supposed to go, just go put it where it's supposed to go. Yeah, Lauren's been, um, I think in like spiral mode and she probably doesn't realize this, but the Uh. amount of little things that I've gone behind her and just like cleaned up and put these shoes over here and put this package over here and like organize this shit. I don't even, I don't even know what's going on in my own, right? I'm in spiral mode. You know what it was is I'm in spiral mode and I also like didn't sleep like three nights in a row. And so like that on top of all of it has just been spirally. You're not someone who is great at um, adapting to no sleep multiple days no, in a row. No, it's not, no. it's not your, it's not your- Cause I, It's cause I don't amphetamine. Right. I don't amphetamine and I only have a limit on caffeine. And so there's nothing to like, just like restart my body. I wish um, you were a little more pre- prescriptive with the amphetamine thing. Cause yeah. that sounds like I just sniff bath salts all the time. Oh. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know exactly what you're hinting at there, but I don't love the idea. I um, feel like I haven't really eaten as much of that lately. Yeah, I just think of like, like that's what kept you alive. That's what kept you alive in like your busiest. Uh, but this year, we'll get to that. Absolutely. Mm, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, definitely. No, I think, um, okay, then let me re-ask this question. Okay. What do you think is the, in the last 10 days? Yeah, yeah. If you had to guess, crystal mm-hmm. ball, mm-hmm. knowing our parents, yeah. knowing the dogs, knowing the one house with, uh, a, a, well, we're not gonna really have a bedroom for a night. What's the worst thing that happened? What's the most embarrassing thing? What's the most embarrassing thing? What's the thing that we go, well, okay, that was a close call. (laughs) It won't be that. No, but like, what was the what was the close call? Hmm. I think I don't know if it'll be necessarily a close call, but what I anticipating being the most uncomfortable is my mom and your mom both being annoyingly polite back and forth Ah. until one of them eventually like I, I can picture your mom wanting to help in the kitchen, even though she doesn't necessarily like to cook. And my mom just like genuinely like is really good at cooking and like has her routine and stuff. So like realistically, ideally what they both want is my mom to just cook by herself and your, and like your mom just wants to just, just in, you know, not cook. Obviously she wants to help. And like, that's, she wants to be helpful. Mm, But like the ideal scenario- Donna is big with helpful. Helpful, right? But she doesn't love to cook. Like that's not- But Donna wants to be helpful, but also isn't interested in being in the way. 
which puts again, just Donna in a very yeah. hard position. So I can already picture the conversation that, oh, Gail, what can I do? Oh no, Donna, nothing, nothing. Like take your glass of wine. Like I'm mm. totally fine. No, no, I insist. What yeah. can I do? And then them just going ping ponging back and forth for so many variations of no, it's okay. How can I help? No, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Please, what can I do? And it'll just be like, both of you shut the fuck up, please, please. I think that will be fine. I think I have something different. Oh no, okay, please share with the class. And it's gonna be one of us. Okay. There, after, you know, you know, we've, we've got a little more comfortable, maybe had a meal or two, whatever. Okay. The parents will be talking about something and okay. they'll be going back and forth. Similarly, just like painfully polite. We're like, it's like, okay, this is like, please give me some like mm -hmm. meat here to this conversation. Yeah. And they're gonna respond, one's going to respond to the other with, and a, a safe answer, a uh -huh. half truth answer. Not like right. a full lie, but like they're saying the answer that we, like they know they're supposed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of us is gonna go, that's not what you think. We're gonna fuck, we're gonna fuck up. We're, go we're going to almost be like, you sure about that? Okay, because it's gonna be like a thing that like we are also you on the side You say that to your mom, even I think when it's just the three of us. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and then the moment those words are out there, we're gonna wanna shove them back into our mouths. Right. It's too late. Yeah. And then we're gonna get the, well, I just, and whatever comes after that. Uh, right, is, oh my God, well, I just think Well, I that. just, and then there's the rationale yeah. that is oh. then just entrenched mm -hmm. in all of the we, all of the weeds mm -hmm. that we don't wanna get close to. Did you have the prep conversation with your mom about how like we didn't grow up in a church and like we are publicly on like the, did you have that conversation? No. Are when, well not are you going to, when are you going to have that conversation with her? I was thinking you guys just run through all the things that you don't want to talk mm -hmm. to her about mm -hmm. just over breakfast when she gets in, mm -hmm. maybe lunch. Yeah. Yeah. On the 24th. No, I, um, we, we will chat about like, Don, I'll be fine. I'm not worried about her. Totally. I think that she, I think she would be mad at you if she knew that you were withholding information for her to not, to help her be more, socially, all huh. Donna wants to do is be helpful and all Donna wants to do is do good upon other people. And so I think that she would be mad <laughs> at you if she knew that you're withholding information to make her more socially appropriate towards my parents. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever understood less of something that you've said, but, yeah. but yes, yes. I, I get the, the general yeah. idea. Yeah. Have yeah. you had this conversation? What do you mean? Literally every 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 week we have this conversation. About what? No politics, no religion, don't go hard, like all, all of it. Okay. All of it. All right. Yeah. I think it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I know that it's gonna be fine. Mm. It's literally less than 48 hours. It is going to be fine. What did you get for me for Christmas? Less than $300 worth. What do you think I got you for Christmas? Probably nothing so far. No. As of December 14th. No, no, no. Really? It's done, it's done. It's done. It's done. How much did you spend? More than $300. We'll find out on the 26th. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm i pretty excited. About your present to me? Yeah. Wow. Oh. I'm pretty excited. Was it a last minute or was it planned? Um, like, did you have like a last minute stroke of genius? I think I've been planning this gift for a couple other holidays. Okay. And it was like, eh, and just this one made sense. Got it, got it. Um, I really like your gift. I'm really happy with it. It just wasn't of intense financial monetary value. Great, yeah. great. I'm sure it'll mean a lot. Um, no, I think it was cute. You're you're a good gift giver. You are- I love giving gifts. Yeah. Love so like giving gifts. You getting me a gift under $500 means you found something that was perfect and yeah. it just happened to be $16. Exactly. Yeah, great. Exactly. Um, the- other thing I want to chat on today is mm -hmm. the fact that you helped two new boobies come into the world yesterday. Oh my god! You basically played. I, like, I basically, I, I what, what's it? It's the uh, the doula. Oh, you you think you can use that term? I can't. Maybe you can. I I'm think not I using can. that. I think it's. I think that's literally the title. I would have gone the, with like a booby midwife. A boob. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go booby midwife. Yeah. I was a booby midwife yesterday. I helped deliver two new boobies yeah. into society. Yeah. Um, successfully. Successfully. Yeah. We, there was a few rough hours. So I when, didn't know if we were going to make it. Lauren texted me, we we're, were supposed to this podcast for two days now. And Lauren texted me, she was like, I think I might have to stay in a hotel in Irvine with Mia. And it's like 1135 in the morning. And I'm like, 
Why? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, we just can't move. We we are we are not okay. I didn't know people violently throw up after they get boobies. Well, implanted. it's not it's not boobies. It's the anesthesia, right? It. So it's like especially so. Okay, back up, back up. Best friend Mia, OnlyFans Mia, made a new business investment and got herself two new boobies. Is it a tax write off? It should be. It should be. Yeah. Oh, they're free. Right. They were free That's boobies. Right. Free boobies. Yeah. Free boobies. They were not free boobies. Lauren didn't pick any up, but but. And after did. seeing this process, I don't know if I ever would. I got hearing about the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't think it's for you. So you, I mean, it's similar to a lot of surgeries. You fast, no water, no food for eight hours. Um, and so we left at four thirty. Picked her up around five. A. And we a.m. a.m. We drove down to Irvine, and her surgery was scheduled for eight a.m. Um, and then they called me just after 10 being like surgery went great. It all went really smoothly. She's just in recovery now and she'll be waking up soon. We'll give you a call when she's ready. That was like just after 10. Um, 11 o'clock rolls around and they call. And so like- Lauren's so cute. She went to, she went to Target. She got blankies. I got- She got snackos. Snacks. You got a little, get a little games. You got everything. It's, so, it's adorable. <laughs> and I, I also brought myself a Squishmallow. I slept. I like took my car to like the back corner of this medical building at- 6.30 after Mia went in and I dropped her off. Put yourself on dog mode. Put my car in dog mode. Really? Went back to, yeah. That's, you put yourself in dog mode? Yeah, why not? Cause then the temperature stays the same. I, that's amazing. Yeah, put yeah. my put myself at 72 degrees in dog mode. Wow. And I went back to sleep for two hours in the backseat. Wow. Had some weird ass dreams. I feel like we were like sleeping in a weird yeah. place. With like other sensory Wait, yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, weird fucking dreams. I feel like every time I'm in a hotel or an Airbnb or anywhere that's not my bed, yeah. my dreams, Fucking insane. Yeah. Can I, can I get some scientific ideas as to why that would be? I, I think I think it does have to do with all of your sensory. Right. Yeah, sensory. I'm, I'm like, sensory. like fighting through eighth grade uh, uh, theater with uh, a calculus test to do next week and I have six arms. Why? That's That checks out. Right. That it, really does check out. Yeah. Um. So I had my little nappy. I went to Target, did a little shopping. I got some breakfast and then I was back in the parking lot, just editing, just hanging in the in the car, just doing a little, doing a little typey typey, a little edity edity. You tell me you didn't read or watch any Tiki Talks. Watch a few Tiki Talks. Okay, there you go. Watch a few Tiki Talks. I know you. Sure. Um, and then, so they called me just for 10. It's like, oh, she's recovering, is out of surgery. She's like starting to wake up. Um, calls me at 11 being like, hey, so she um, is still waking up, just needs a little more time. It was an hour later? An hour later. And I was like, oh, okay, like, no worries. Like, I'm just like in the parking lot, like, give me a call whenever. Um, and I was like, okay, all good. And then just after 12, they, they also like didn't give me any, um, like any idea that she was like not okay. Unwell. That she was unwell right. until after, until she was in the wheelchair in front of the building and being like, here you go. Like, take this barfing lady. <laughs> And so anyways, another hour rolls around and I was like, yeah, like all good. Like I'm, I'm chilling. Like my whole day is set to like, just like be booby nurse. Right. It will be midwife. Bo booby midwife. Yeah. So I pull up in the front and she's like eyes closed, like just looking like she's holding on for dear life in this wheelchair. Her face is just completely white. I also, she's also got her sweater zipped up. So I can't even see that there's new boobies. You know what I mean? So right. it's like, she just looks like she's like oh, on You dropped her, her off bed. in pretty decent condition. Yeah. And, and she is came, not came back okay. Used. Not okay. Used. And she's obviously like still coming, uh, still coming out of anesthesia and- Ugh. Yeah, it, it, honestly, like it happens super frequently where people get sick afterwards because they just like, there's so many drugs in your body, you've got nothing to absorb all of it. And so they had given her the anti nausea and all like the meds and stuff. But again, she had nothing in her body. So she had brought crackers. Well, two big old boobies. Two big old boobies, which can't absorb probably anything. Right. Um. And so she's, I, she, I was like, well, hey, like, what do you need? And she Come kept on. trying to like- What, what do you want? The, what do you need? The girl kept okay? trying to like stuff her in the car. And I was like, can we just like have a minute? Can we just like have a second? Because she was like, Lauren, like walk away. Like I'm going to throw up. Like you guys don't have emetophobia or right. whatever. And so like throwing up is like my, you know what though? I will say if there's anyone that I could- Rally for. Rally for. It's not me. It's Mia. Not me. It's a hundred percent Mia. Couldn't be me less. And Lauren would 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 scream from the other side of the bathroom. Are you fine? Is everything okay? Is it? You are, okay, you babe? are you done? Are you done? You okay? Are you okay. You need some water. I'm going downstairs. I'm gonna get your crackers. You, I'm gonna get a Xanax. Do you want one? <laughs> <laughs> and so I I really was like me like it is totally fine like whatever you said. No, I'm gonna throw them in your car. You can't throw them in your car. I mean it's totally fine. If she puked in your car. What? If she puked in your car, that's well, totally fine. They had- What if I puke in your car? That's not okay. What if I'm sick? 
that's also not okay. Okay. The, um, so she had the, all those like little medical barfy bags, you know? The, the, right. Yeah. And they also had like what looked like doggy pee pads. Okay. Um, which we're quite familiar with. Which we are quite familiar with. And so she basically got her into the car and put the doggy pee pad on top of her, like like a bib. And she was good though. She like, like spoiler, she didn't get sick the entire way home. Cause she kind of just fell asleep. Um, Cause obviously Thank like God. still so much anesthesia, but she was, not okay. And she was like barely communicative. And I literally was like, we have to be back here. And by we, I mean, Sheila, I wasn't able to take her to the follow appointment today, but she had to come back to Irvine this morning at nine. So I was like, one, you're not okay right now. And I was like, should we just get a hotel so she can just like sleep for a little bit and get something in her body? Cause like when someone's sick, the last thing, I mean, it goes two ways. Like if you're super sick, you either like, all you want to do is be home but if you've got an hour and a half car ride in between that, it's like, oh, that's just so brutal. I've never yep. been so aware of every bump in the road because she was in so much pain. I felt so bad. I took my tonsils out and then drove back from Kentucky. That's that, right. I think about was, that. Yeah. That was the, that might've been the dumbest thing I've ever done. I can actually name a few other things. Like one of them being the tattoo of your ex fiance's initials. I would, I would get them finger. doubled down on all of my fingers. Mm -hmm if it meant I didn't have to drive eight and a half hours after getting my tonsils removed to 20. Hmm. I'd get neck tats. <laughs> neck tats? Neck tats. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? Tell you that I love you in endlessly and that's that you are my favorite person in the whole so wide world. Nice. And that's it. So it's not checking up on your credit score. That's second. That's, that's second. second. Got yeah, it, got yeah. it, got it. Um, well, luckily Chime is here to do that for you as the number one thing before you tell me how much you love me. Got it. So moving forward, you want me to consult Chime on yes. my credit score. Yes. And then and tell then, Well, no, no how, about, how, about, how about you tell me you, you love me. Mm -hmm. Chime, you love mm -hmm. me. I gotta be honest, I was lying the whole time. I always consult mm -hmm. with Chime and my mm -hmm. credit score before I chat with you because if my credit score is in the right place, mm -hmm. nothing else matters. That's true. That's true. I wish that I had chime back in the day to help me out. Being up to date on your credit score is key to a stress-free life. Credit is such a huge part of being an adult. And I feel like people don't really tell you how big of a deal no. credit is. No. Um, and so while it may seem intimidating, Chime can seriously, seriously make a massive difference in your life. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Building credit can be really hard to do when you're first starting out. And that is why we love Chime. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. That's huge. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. Start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank and a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some users' scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply, except at MoneyPass ATMs and a 7-Eleven or any all-point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Before Lauren books a single <laughs> I knew this brunch, was going to be personal. She pours over the lists. She pours over the reviews. It's it's the photos. She it's the photos, the photos that get she me. She compares. She contrasts. <laughs> she reports back and she asks so many questions. Now, the interesting thing is, starting with ZocDoc, you can do the same for your doctor. When I mean the same, you can see real verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just as, if not more important than finding the right plate of Eggs Benedict. I love a good Eggs Benny. You love an love Eggs Benny. Love an Eggs Big Benny. Benny fan. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, Fix an achy back, Jeremy. Fix yep. an achy back, uh, Jeremy. Yep. Fix an achy back. Mm -hmm. Fix an achy back. Mm -hmm. Fix an achy back. Yeah. <laughs> Get that mole checked out or anything else. Zocdoc has you covered. Finding the right doctor is huge when you need it. I am not the biggest fan of going into doctor's offices because of experiences I've had in the past. And also, why is it always so damn cold? Sorry. Anyway, but Zocdoc has changed the game. 
Find and review local doctors, read verified patient reviews from people who actually made real appointments. And when you walk into that doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. It's like Yelp, but for your health. SockDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that's right for you, and book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. For free. For free. It's, for, it's just free, Lauren. It's free. Free. Yeah, this is the best deal ever. Free. Go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. free. <laughs> <laughs> then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. Sockdoc.com slash wild. Free. Free. <laughs> So we drove back and she was in a shit ton of pain. So they, they like fucked up somehow and didn't have her, they didn't send her pain meds home with her. They didn't have her pain meds ready the day before when she picked up her antibiotics. It seems, And maybe, is that like a, a, a law? Like That's what I thought too, but everyone that I talked to said no. Like she, one, she shouldn't have left in pain. Right. Um, Cause normally like you leave because they've like sent you on your way and you, your dosage like should carry you. Like a little more like, uh relative sometimes. I fucking, I don't even know. So anyway, so I went and picked up, which also like kind of like hardcore painkillers. I didn't have to like show them her ID. I just gave full name and that's it. Great. And so I was like- You have a trustworthy face. I think I do have a trustworthy face. I would face. trust you with you. certain things. So much. Yeah. And so anyways, things have gotten progressively better at a, at a expedited pace, which yeah. has been really good. But the first so we'll be back four on hours- like next week. Oh, probably even earlier than that. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe I take a week off. Well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Me is in her grind era right now. I'm thrilled for her hustle era. I'm, it's great. Her new booby era. I mean, if you're going to make an investment like that, uh -huh. both pain, time, yeah, all of it, mm -hmm. might as well make some money on it. Right. So Vlogmas Day 13 um was my no 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 Vlogmas Day 13 was booby oh, day. Oh, got it. Which one didn't happen? Uh, day 12. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well. The 12th day of Christmas. 12th day of Christmas. Who cares about that? Yeah. Um, so booby vlog is day 13 of Vlogmas. And at this point in time, Mia will definitely have her consultation video out and also probably her like uh, recap of the experience video out by Got now it. on the 26th. I'm excited. Yeah. Anyway, so I helped birth two new boobies into the world. As a boob connoisseur, yeah. I couldn't be more supportive. They put the left one, never. the left one they put in was bigger. 300 on one side and 280 on the other side. So like, Match it, like make them even? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but you know that if your natural boobies are kind of pointing in like one direction or like kind of like outwards or anything, that's more based on your bone structure since they can't move your nipple. And so like- wait, 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 what do you mean they can't move the nipple? Like your nipple's not coming off. Like they're just like, they can't, they can't- oh, I would have thought like the shape of the boob would have like moved the nipple to another place. Oh, like kind of, but not really. Basically I said like if your bone structure like has a boob, like just say your right boob points out a little more than the left one because your bone structure. That means that your implants will probably do something similar. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they can't they can't overcorrect um, bone structure. So the direction that nipples want to face, nipples going face are the face that that's where they're going. Yeah, you can't nipples going go where nipples won't go. I get it. Okay, yeah. got it. I, wait, do boobs ever like just go? They both go this way, or both go this way, or both go that way, or both go this way, or like is, is there like <laughs> a up and down. you know what I mean? Like is there? You know a, what, babe? All boobs are different. Right. Sisters, not twins. All nudes are different. All nudes are different. Sisters, not twins. Yeah. It's adorable. Someone told me, was, were you there when someone told me that they that they know someone who got a nut removed through their belly button? Jerry, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, Jerry told us about this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There are some stories that I wish that I could just go back and just like Un delete. Here? Yeah. That's From your one brain? Of them. That's one of them. Oh the my God. The thought of losing a nut in general sounds pretty bad. Yeah. But through my belly button? Yeah. Why? Why? Like also- why is the belly button like good for so many things? Like it's what like feeds your entire body while you're in the womb. Uh -huh. Then it just kind of sits there, but then like, it could be reactivated for shit like that later on. I hate that. Same. The belly what? button actively makes me very uncomfortable. If you touch Lauren's belly button, she will hit you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It literally is like a button to make me feel sick. Yeah. Like you press it and I just feel sick immediately. Yeah, I get it. I understand this. And yeah. I, I now only do it when I want to piss you off, in, which happens. And then it is a direct correlation. Yeah, no, like no, no, I push it. belly button equal punch right. equal mad. Well, it's like, like, I feel like every guy can understand and relate to the fact that like their girlfriend sometimes like hits them 
playfully. Mm. And then it hits them like not like, playfully. Yeah. That's one of those ones. One of the not playful ones. Yeah. yeah like you, you will inflict pain on me. For sure. If I Whatever touch like the, the nearest thing is. So like whether it's like nails in the arm or like a punch or whatever, yeah. it's, it will The occur. nails in the arm really hurts. You know what? So does you getting talents. so does so does getting stabbed in my belly button. Checkerboard nails over there mm -hmm. hurt. They're Christmas yeah. right now. Great, perfect. They're Christmas. What? Keep them next. Just cancel Pearl and just keep those for two more weeks. I probably could keep them for two more weeks. To be honest, I see, I know. Um, okay, great. So yeah, that's my um, our future facing Christmas wrap up um, based off of pure speculation. We'll see how it goes. I think it's gonna be totally fine. It's gonna be fine too. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Fortunately, we have two oh my distractions. God, wait. Okay, so this isn't coming out until after Christmas. My mom, for whatever reason, is so adamant on like, if I give one gift, she must give one gift. <laughs> yeah. And so I have a few gifts to give. I love, I love, I love giving gifts. I love it. And I like, there's just like, I didn't go out of my way to be like, I want to buy gifts this year. But like on Black Friday, I was ordering a few pieces of clothing for myself. I saw some pieces my mom would like, so I ordered them. And then I got, I got an ad on TikTok for, this like book of all the headlines that happened on your birthday for the last a hundred years or whatever. And I was like, Donna and Greg will think that is just so quaint. And then- And I, Gail will- And Gail will think that that is another piece yeah. of shit in her house. Yeah. But I was like, I'm not gonna get it for two parents and not the third one. So I ordered one for all three of them for their specific birthdays. Just give it to Greg so that he has the memories of his wife. Wife, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my dad will, I think he'll think it's so cool. And Donna will just think that's just absolutely dandy. Oh, isn't that just so oh, wonderful? Oh my goodness. Now she'll love going through that. Yeah. Love going through that. Or a reminder that she's old and she'll hate it. One of the two. One of the two. But she also is like, how old's your mom again? You oh, you want to just take the fucking delight status right off? Yeah. No, but I can't remember. My dad might be older than her. You know what I mean? So there's no reason for- he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's not. Okay. Well, Donna wins. Yeah. yeah she yeah, can yeah. go first to Catan in each game. Mom, that was the first and last time that I'm going to save face for you on this podcast by not revealing <laughs> the year you were born, which is probably Googleable. <laughs> Oh my um, God. I would love to get a read mm. on the last year. Okay. As far as what you thought were the highs and lows in our own life. Mm -hmm. And then in our not own life. Okay. Not, not our not own, own life. life. Not our own life. Not the life that we live. In the world. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. Um. Okay. Where do you want to start? I want to start with where you start. Okay. The high cool. of my- Let's start with the lows. Let's start with, you want to start with the lows? Yeah. Let's start with the negative. <sighs> Fucking shit. Okay, personal low? Yeah. I got a couple. You got time? Yeah. Okay, here we go. No, I mean, I don't know anything crazy. Are you sure you want to start with the lows? We can start with the highs? I feel like we start with the highs. Okay. Let's start with Diggy. Wait, stop. Stop. What? I was gonna start with Diggy. No, but we that's like a, a, a personal high for us. So I made a little list of the things that I thought were the best moments for this this year. Yeah. Um, Because I couldn't really pick one, even though that's the assignment that I gave you earlier. And uh, I just want to like go over a few of Do you them. have a lot? I, we'll have a few. Okay. Just a couple moments. Yeah. Um, I got to experience your first private jet with you this year. That is the bougiest thing you've ever said. A little PJ moment. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah. It was fun. But the way, this is so funny because it's like the way you're saying it, it's like, I, like I've had my time on the private jet and now you can join me <laughs> on the private jet experience. Continue, continue. <laughs> first PJ, first PJ, go ahead, go ahead. You had a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun watching you have fun. I had so much fun. We got to go to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. Which was fucking nuts. Yeah, that was that was crazy. You weren't there, but F1 Miami was fucking insane. Uh-huh. You would have loved it. Michelle Obama. Actually, you would have loved it. Yeah, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was like- I would love to eat a lobster tail though, being in Michelle Obama's presence. That sounds wonderful. I, that's a lifestyle really. Yeah. Um, Coachella was amazing. Coachella was First fun. year back in a long time. Yep. Uh, we met Kentucky Lauren. Kentucky Lauren is currently in hibernation, but yes, she was there for a little bit. I I can't wait to, to see her again. It'll it'll come back eventually, oh, I'm sure. Oh yeah. I didn't I wish I'd also known at the time. Yeah. The gift that I was being given. No, 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 because that it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been as fun. You're right. Because even yeah. even now, the expectations you have for me, if you think that like Kentucky Lauren is joining us on a trip, is like really stressful to live up to. Honestly, she'll She'll be gone before I even realized she was here. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Um, I finally got my fucking car. Oh my waiting God. For 15 Honestly, months. I miss being able to use that joke. We had that joke for over a year. I genuinely think back to how long I waited for a car. Yeah. And I, I'm glad 15, I did the whole fucking thing. 15 months. But what a fucking ridiculous thought. I haven't thought about that in a while and I I, I miss it. It feels nostalgic. I like feels looked nostalgic. at my, my photos earlier and mm -hmm. I was like, 
I remember. Like, That's what I did too, to like find like, like events. It wasn't even real. Uh-huh. Um, oh, I really enjoyed our trip to Calmio's Ranch for your birthday. Yeah. Yeah, we had a nice little birthday yeah, moment. Yeah. That was great. We went to the Emmys this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed finally getting my mom back to LA. Yeah. And setting up, I think, a sustainable way to get her ass out here. That was a game-changing moment for the rest of our lives. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and last and without question, most importantly, Diggy. 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 So those are the things that I thought were the high moments Diggy. for our personal life this year. I totally agree. It's just so crazy, like thinking- But you could do it to agree. I literally wrote down Diggy. Diggy? Diggy. That's- You said write one thing for high and one thing for low. I guess then we'll just do the bare minimum for this podcast. And so then do you want me to go, do you want me to flip through my photos? No, I just, if, that's, if it's just one thing, it's cool. Fine. Please hold. No, you don't have to. Hold. No, I don't want. I don't want this. Like, I don't want this in real time. It's fine. Diggy. I, I, I approve and I agree. Okay. Yeah. It's just so crazy thinking about like at the beginning of the year, like we didn't even know. Beginning of the year, three months ago. Four months ago, we didn't even know. I know. We didn't even know. We were like watching your Wired interview that came out uh, on YouTube. Yeah. And they asked about your dog, and your dog. Like everything was just the dog, the dog, and now we have the boys. But then we only had one boy. And we didn't want Bob. Yeah, it's like. We like, all we do is we just like, let's go, can't believe we have two of them. Literally. Or like when we're both cuddling on the couch and we both have one pup. A pup for everyone. For a small moment when Diggy stops eating my mouth and isn't it's climbing on top of so your trachea. Nice. It's amazing. It's, it's like, so nice. Makes it all worth it. Oh my God. Oh, no, it's just, yeah, Diggy was like the most unexpected, most incredible thing of the year. Nightmare sometimes, but we love him. Well, we love him so much. Yeah. We yeah. Love him Definitely so sucks much. a lot. We've, We've definitely gone through a little bit of a, a new, well, you know, do we like those rugs? Do we like this yeah. seat? Do we like, like this pillow? No. Nah, no, no, no. We'll just get all new ones. But also like when you get a puppy. Totally. When, when, pup, when you get a puppy, a puppy pees and shits in the house 10 times a day. Right. In but like when you that adopt first a month. seven year old, you don't really think that you're going to have to deal with that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. I thought that wasn't one that I was worried about. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's and fine. here we are. <laughs> um, so I noticed that you have one good thing and a laundry list of bad. No, not like a laundry list of bad things. I feel like I'm just like in my quarterly spiral right you now. You are. And yeah. We, and we talked actually for a while how you were you were overdue. Yeah. And then you were overdue. This happens every year though after Vlogmas. Yeah. And I after. have- It's- During. Yeah. During. It's straight up during. Yeah. Yeah. I actually it's, think- No, the no, last Vlogmas was way worse. Last Vlogmas was worse. Yes, correct. Way worse. Yes, yeah. correct. Correct. You're way correct. more- uh, insane. Centered. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> no, I totally agree. This year, that was one of my other highs too. I, like, I think mental health this year has been the best that it's been in the last eight years. Yeah. Like very, very good. The year before that was rock bottom, but you got to hit that rock bottom to come, to come. What What's that episode of SpongeBob where, is it literally oh. rock bottom? I think the bus literally goes to rock bottom because he lives in bikini bottom. And I think rock bottom when he takes a whole dive, I think it's rock bottom. Anyways, last year, rock bottom. This year, back to bikini bottom. Okay. And things are just peachy. Things are peachy. Things well, are quite things peachy. Things are dumpy. Dumpy trucky. Things things are dumpy, trucky, thicky, peachy, dumpy. Yes. And um, Why? That, that was my other. I think I had an incredible therapist who mm -hmm. truly changed my life and the way that he was able to help me learn to rewire how you can think and react to situations. Um, neuroplasticity. We've talked about this in other podcasts, but it's like the, I think, I think there were major strides made in like the mental health space when a uh, scientist confirmed that you can rewire and change how a brain thinks, yep. which is just like the concept that like, it's like Play-Doh and you can, you can mold it. Well, so I think the, the idea of like, you're, you're, the, you're the way that you are and there's nothing you can do about it. That's, that's right. just I'm, you're you. You're just hardwired to do that. I'm hardwired to react like that. And yeah. that is, and, and you know what, it's empowering, I think, to know that um, neuroplasticity is a thing and that you can change the way you think and you can change the way that you react to things and how your body, like, even though your body naturally wants to react to things and you think are just hardwired to do that, it's entirely, um, it's, it's in your control to be able to change that. Got it. So even involuntary responses can be semi-voluntary. 100%. Slightly no, Not to say that they're voluntary, but what feels like an involuntary reaction can be rewired so that it Less might futile. just not happen next time right. you have that same trigger. Right. Which has been really empowering. So learned a lot about my brain this year. Mm -hmm. 
and medications have been chilling. I think I've been on the same one now for a year and a half. And so that's like finally like totally settled yep. and balanced and everything is peachy, thicky, dumpy, peachy, great. Okay, anything else? No, there's, there's other things. I, I know there's other things. What else you got? Oh no, that was the high. Got it. That was the high. Oh, we haven't, been, we haven't even scratched the surface on the lows. Okay, got it. I think getting more involved with fitness and weightlifting and being in the gym almost daily. Mm -hmm. Vlogmas has really thrown me off my gym game. Right. Um, but typically I'm in the gym, you know, five to six days a week. Right. And you spend a lot of time wearing, you know, revealing like a, a sports bra and shorts. And I feel like when you're wearing like body dysmorphia is that it's realist. I feel like when you spend that much time in the gym which feels mm -hmm. backwards, which feels backwards. I know it does, I know yeah. it does. But I've I've had this confirmed by so many other people who have gotten more involved in gym stuff because you spend so much more time, like off the bat, I already, I already spent, okay, okay, let's back up. Body dysmorphia, I would say is the core of this conversation okay. of like low. And so I think spending the last 10 years on the internet, you see photos and videos of yourself at an un ungodly amount in pace yeah. and increments. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just not normal. And so I think you develop some pretty severe body dysmorphia because you're like, I always say this, like, I don't know what I look like. Like, I really don't know. Okay. I don't know. Like I see myself from so many different angles and I only see myself, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I fucking look like. I really don't. And like size wise, I feel the same thing. Like sometimes I see photos of myself and I'm like, oh, I look like that. And I see photos. I'm like, oh, I look like that. And it's not necessarily always negative or positive, but I just like, when I say like, it is like dysmorphia, it is so skewed. It is so skewed. And also it's like the, you, you do have, um, wide ranges of uh, feelings yeah, towards- My body. Yeah. For sure. And so then I think on the daily of having 10 years of that under my belt and then add, you know, a couple hours in the gym every day where you are literally there thinking about your body and um, targeting part, parts of your body. Like you're working on your arms. Like, so his, you're not only taking like progress photos and videos just for the sake of like being like, oh, am I getting stronger? Like I like seeing the muscles develop. Like right. that's great. And that's healthy. The intention behind it is healthy, but you're still, you're still just seeing more videos and images of your body. But how do you fix that? I don't know. I really don't know. I genuinely don't know. And I think maybe it's just something that you just have to try to have the perspective of like, it's just a body and not necessarily associating it with something where it's like good or bad or like bigger muscles equals good. And, you know. Well, like, okay, so what is your goal? I think the goal is, so you can do these body scans, like you can get scales where you stand on it and they're like, oh, if you get on with bare feet, it'll tell you like your your muscle percentage and your body fat percentage and all your percentages. Are you talking about the scale that I got? Yeah, those scales are not, usually the most accurate. So you can do um, these like full body scans where it gives you like your bone density. It gives you like a crazy accurate breakdown of mm -hmm. like every percentage of your body. Right. And so I think those are a more accurate way of tracking like your muscle growth and your fat loss. Okay. And so I've, I've obviously got a screenshot of every few months I do them and same thing like, it's great because I wanna see how my hard work pays off in terms of like gaining more muscle because that's really like the overall goal. And typically when like your muscle, for me, yeah. I okay. think like muscle percentage to go up and then, you know, when a percentage goes up, the other ones have to go down because it's like, it's a hundred, it's gotta come from somewhere. Right. And so I think that's the overall goal. But again, having another version of a screenshot of something body related, I think can be really fucking hard. And I've had numbers go in the direction that I am not, that, that is not my goal. And I feel like been totally okay. And so it's not necessarily seeing like a number fluctuate that I think is unhealthy. It's more just that like they're in the quantity of screenshots and photos and videos in general of body related things. I think this year has been like very overwhelming. But like, how did you land on in your head, the numbers that you want to succeed? Well, like weight wise, I really don't care. I've never, I've never been someone who's been hung up on weight because that like, I just, I kind of stay around the same amount, right. um, no matter what my muscle or body fat percentage is. And so like, I've never been about that, but I think I just realized that I want to be, I want to be a healthier composition of muscle versus body fat percentage. 
And okay. I, think I, w- I think I was surprised. I think I was surprised at where my body fell into the general averages of the population, which again, like it's not more of a comparison thing of like me to someone else. It's more just that like, I was like, oh, I can definitely be healthier here. Okay. And, and so how's it going? Good. Good. Okay, good. Yeah, but I think, again, it just adds another another layer of um, like checking. Wait, but like, okay, I'm confused. If the results are good mm-hmm. and you're telling me that the goal is to get better results mm-hmm. and you're able to admit that and, and understand that and mm-hmm. accept that, mm-hmm. but you're not happy with the results that are admittedly good. That's, wait, hang on. No, I am, I am, I'm not, not, happy. Okay. I guess I'm just like always in a state of confusion. Okay. This is applies to a lot of things, I think, but yeah. Definitely, for sure. I just just stay in one little box. I just stay in a state of panic and confusion. (laughs) That's my resting. Where's Lauren? Confused. What's she doing? (laughs) Panic. Confused. Yeah. yeah, Spiraling. (laughs) (laughs) That is truly my resting state. That is truly my resting state. Um, But no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm confused because I understand your goal. Yeah. And I think it's a healthy way to look at it and it's mm-hmm. a good mindset. Mm-hmm. But admittedly, I'm hearing you say that you're not all that um, comfortable. No, you're, you're right. Uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm still not super comfortable in my body. Right. But you're also, I don't feel like you're, you're either not giving yourself enough credit mm-hmm. for receiving and achieving good results or the results that you're getting mm-hmm. are not actually working towards a goal that I think you honestly... Uh, are are placing on the pedestal that is success. So it's like either I think you're just like you're moving either in the right direction and don't realize it or not giving yourself enough credit for it, right. or you are distracting yourself with a goal you don't actually care about, and that's why you're not as excited as you should be. And that is betterhelp.com slash w time with um, <laughs> therapist Mr. Lewis. Uh, yeah, unavailable. Um, but I, I just yeah, I don't know. It, it's like it's a combination. You look great. You look better than you ever have. And you're, I see that. I, and I just don't. And that's like, right. that's like where the body, it lies in the body. You should try having sex with you. It's great. <laughs> that's I so nice. Yeah. That is so nice. Yeah. If I could like package that up and allow others, um, I wouldn't, but. Right. Yeah. You know. So that sounds a little bit like you're my pimp and I. Am. Could be an interesting product place. Right. That's to package me up and sell me. VR. Mm. Mm. One day. Um, but yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah. so, so that's, that's your lowish. That's that's my that's my what else? lowish. There's, I know there's gotta be stuff in there. What else you got? Other other lows? Yeah. Um, I would say I mean work wise, I'm consistently always just career spiraling. Right. Okay. Um, HBO obviously. So we I actually haven't talked about this anywhere yet. Great time to chat about Great it. Great time to chat about it. Um, so HBO went through a big merger with Discovery. Jeremy's got a Craftopia season two sweater on. Yeah, so I nice. Do. I do. Yeah, so nice. Now it's like vintage and a collectible. <laughs> yeah, seriously. A limited run. Um, so HBO merged with Discovery and in wow. Discovery merged with Warner, fucking whatever the semantics of it are. There was, it was, it was chaos. It was just mass chaos. And I feel like you'll be able to describe this better than I will be able to. Zasloff, the CEO of Discovery, uh-huh. basically committed to cutting three and a half billion dollars in expenses. Right. So, and so in that three and a half billion dollars of expenses uh, was almost every single unscripted show on the HBO Max platform. Yeah. So like, I think the only two shows that didn't get axed were Selena and Chef, which is in the unscripted category, but like, let's be honest, that's a scripted show. And F Boy Island, like those were the only two unscripted shows. Man, that's- right, and also, exactly. And let, let's be honest, that also is a scripted it's show. A lightly themed lightly with, themed. with some suggested copy if you wanted to start. <laughs> of storylines yeah. and again, but plots. Then if, how, about, how did that how make like you feel? this? Um, yeah, so you got um, caught in a big old cleanup. I got, I got, we got, yeah, got caught in a big, so a big a old merger. Point. Yep. That's a low point. And I think also too, like it not being on the HBO Max platform anymore, the show Craftopia, both yeah. seasons. Um, although it is a low and I'm like, damn, I wish that hadn't happened. I don't, I don't see it as like um, a career situation where like, I feel like it was something really bad because- I, I think all in all, like it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the show didn't get canceled because it wasn't a good show and it wasn't performing. The show got cut from the platform because every single unscripted show got cut from the platform. So it wasn't personal, which well, I feel really good about. You also gotta remember like they cut 
uh, like entire movies that had already been produced. 70 million, what, was it Batgirl that got caught? I think it was Batgirl for Batgirl, $70 yeah. million like, dollars Wonder or Woman's something. Wonder not getting another, another um, oh, my uh, God. sequel. Like yeah. the, there's massive cuts. And like the, when it comes to like these massive corporations, like they're just gonna look at it, even when they have a piece of content. Right. There's a, and this is gonna be, I'm gonna try and abridge this very quickly. Oh my God, this is gonna be nerdy. You can essentially over the, the, the course of years, mm -hmm. you know, take the amount of money you invested into something and there's going to be, oh God, what is the term that's gonna make fucking sense? Point is, as opposed to, uh, the asset not being worth as much as it used to be right. over the course of five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. the company can elect to essentially make it worth nothing immediately and then just take the loss of all of that right. and then use that as a credit against the taxes that they have to pay. And so mm -hmm. when they have a $100 million movie that they spent money on, but they know they have to spend another $100, $200 million on it, they can take the whole thing as a loss and not spend more new money on something that they're not all that thrilled with anyway. So it's like when it comes to making shareholders around the world thrilled and excited about this new merger. They mm -hmm. just wanted to take a bunch of fat off of the p and And with that fat, some diamonds went with it. Like Craftopia? Yeah. But, but, like, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So it, again, it wasn't, I, I feel, I think that I would have had, it would have been a harder pill to swallow ego wise if it hadn't performed well. But it- Also like fucking, you're not alone. I oh, mean, that's what I'm I saying. Like, I sent you this morning. Like, so which was it? Um, um, with um, Nick from New Girl. I, he'll always be. Um, um, uh, um, uh, the magazine. What was the magazine called? It was the magazine. God damn it. Minx. 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 Fucking love Minx. But and, like, and like, I was shocked that that got cut from shot. HBO. Season two yeah. is already shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. Oh my god. Like, they are. They're just trying to clean up what it is that they think their new direction's going. Right. Exactly. And yeah. so, like, I think what the strategy is going to be moving forward is that like. Discovery, who has always done unscripted, they can shoot their shows for next to nothing. Yeah. And so shows like Craftopia and F Boy Island and all those well, other big, know, so big shows. Discovery owns the Food Network. Discovery owns TLC. Mm -hmm. Discovery owns a ton yeah. of other channels that mm -hmm. also produce a shit ton of content. And they've specialized in, I don't know if anyone's realized this, but oh wait, these people are already buying houses and we can basically make a show around them going to spend money they were already planning on spending. And if we get content out of it, that's great. And we can do them all over the place in random ass cities where the production budget is a little bit of fucking nothing with people who don't require a bunch of hair and makeup and fashion. What an idea. It's genius. Like when you think about it. Oh my God, yeah, are you kidding? Like not having to be the story and being able to like, yeah. take somebody else's story and use it. Genius. And shoot it and make money off of it. Very inexpensive. Yeah, every single Craftopia episode was 1000 X the amount of money that I would ever spend on my own video. And I also heard that um, FB, F, FB, F Boy Island, like I think that they have like post merger have only agreed to shoot another season if mm. they can figure out how to shoot it for under a certain amount of money. Right. So it comes, I mean, listen, it comes down to it. It's a business it's and a business. people are making decisions mm -hmm. and it's a lot less about what somebody else did or didn't do versus mm -hmm. like, hey, this is the easiest path to me figuring out what I think is the right way, like thing to do. It's not personal. If David had met you, Shaboo. Do you think he would have kept my show? If David Zaslav had met Lauren. Yeah. He would have renewed it for in perpetuity. He would have uh. said, this is our channel. Uh. Uh. I would have got my own show. Moose would have got his own show. Diggy. Yeah. yeah. But also life is long. Discovery's not going anywhere. I think there's a, a world where you For work sure. with them again. 100%. And also yeah. like Craftopia, I think was a great introduction to hosting, which I had a lot of fun doing yep. and I'm open to in the future. And now it. on to your lows. Kind of have any. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, my lows, um, pretty much everything I said I wanted to accomplish and do and focus on this year, this time last year, Okay. I did none of until the last like month or so. And then I've been nailing it. Like my whole thought and everything was like, just like optimizing. And mm -hmm. I've never worked harder in my entire life than I worked this year. And I don't know, no, no, I can confidently say is when I was working my hardest, I was not getting the most done. Mm -hmm. I was treading other people's water mm -hmm. for them while trying to tread my own and just building up amount of just like personal, uh, not financial, but just like personal debt to yeah, myself. For sure. That like I had to dig for the last two months to get out of. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now really starting to feel good about it. Good. Yeah. No, like the the shift in you over the past, like two months ago to up to today are two different people. My Apple watch and Aura ring would tell, tell you the same thing. Literally. Yeah, they'd be like, uh, it seems as if you went from a 76 year old uh, terminally ill patient to mm -hmm. a 30 year old in a month and a half. Welcome back. Yeah, what a thought. Welcome back. Yeah, and so it's been good. 
I think you, I think you've made a ton of growth. Seen growth? Seen like, growth? Experience? Growth. Yeah. Do growth. Well, I just, I think <laughs> there was a, I don't, and I don't really know, I think I still am figuring it out, but there's a, I think I was like trying to quench a thirst uh, coming out here without the traditional path of succeeding in buckets that I gave value to before I got out and did anything on my own. Mm -hmm. And not only did I check those boxes off and like do them well, they didn't all like bring me a lot of joy mm -hmm. and other shit that I didn't really put value to or I just took it for granted. Yeah. That's like right in front of me that's easier and more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Like I let just kind of like sit there for a minute. And so it's like, I'm gonna double down on the things that I actually care about. Mm -hmm. I don't care if anybody else cares about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do those things before I put all my time and effort every day into things that I don't even really care that much about in the first place. No, 100%. Which seems to be like super simple, but I feel like you almost have to like see both sides of it personally, me personally and be like, okay, yeah, no, I, I can do this. This is not a challenge for me anymore. This is just stupid. This is one of those things though, that I think that you personally have to experience to be like, yes. oh, light bulb moment. Because yeah. it'd be one thing if I was like, hey, but like, why don't you spend some more time doing this hobby that you really like and get a lot of joy out of and it's like pretty accessible. You know right. what I mean? Like that that would not resonate with anyone right. who is going at the pace that you were going at. Yeah, yeah. So I think the overarching lesson here is that um, we should listen to ourselves and that's it. <laughs> me con in confusion and panic. Yeah. Maybe not the best advice for me personally. But like, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, how about this? You should listen to me and I should listen to me. Hmm. I think actually w it, it was like, it was like, I should have listened to you and you should have listened to me. Mm, that can't possibly be it. Mm. No, that, I don't like that one. Yeah. Mm. Um, the, um, there's a thing that I want to actually try. Uh, and I think it's the most like, it gives me ick even thinking about like oh, no. trying to, uh, orchestrate this or set this up, whatever. Okay. But this, this guy I recently followed on Instagram was saying how every month, he and his wife like have a, like they basically go on like a lunch date, but like that lunch date is to update the other person or ask questions to the other person of all the things that you feel like one, that they're not asking themselves, but also two huh. in a way that's like all of the things that like, I want you to tell me what you're happy about, what you're not happy about. Yeah. I also want to ask you things that I feel like you're not Whoa. whatever. And then they just keep a tab on like how they're doing every month. But it's not like a sit down, like at a table. It's like, let's, let's go out and like have a, daytime date. A performance review. Yeah, right. So it's like the mixture of like a corporate fucking like OKRs uh -huh. and like, it's a mixture of like- Maybe we should do this at home though. What if I cry? Well, if there's a small fork on the table, Lauren, that that's enough to put you into tears. I love a small fork. Yeah, you could like see, uh, you know, uh, the tail of a, a, a dog. A three-legged dog. You didn't even get to see the rest of it. You're like, but like, what if he was really cute? But what, what if he- What if he was really cute? What if he was like so ugly it was cute? Like that, that shit. So like, uh, I'm- Okay, fine. I'm fine. interested. Fair, fair. I'm fair, interested fair. in taking on this endeavor if you would also be interested. I would also be interested. Great, I love it. Yeah, I feel like because I, I feel like this would be a really healthy form of um, communication and right. couples therapy. Well, it's just like coming to the table and one, having to talk about where you're at and, and what's going on and mm -hmm. good, bad, everything is good, but also coming to the table and also knowing that you're going to be, you have to be okay with your partner asking you questions that might push you, but mm -hmm. also that's the point. Mm -hmm. I think it's healthy if you can communicate. If you can communicate, if you can communicate. And we're perfect, so we can. Thank God. <laughs> we do, okay, I don't know if it's like us or everybody else, but the amount of times that we're just sitting there talking about one of our couple friends being fucking crazy, but it's like, thank God we're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Because like that shit's nuts. That's crazy. But thank God. We're perfect. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank God. Except for a couple of things that you do. That's fine. Well, yeah. And like the things that like we talked about last week about you, but maybe just. Mm, but, I don't remember. Hmm. Um, this is the last episode of the year. I feel like a little like, I feel like a little like, like. Ee. Well, I feel mm, ee. only because we know what we're working on for next year. We do know what we're working on for next year. And I'm not ready to talk about it yet, no. but I do want to start percolating that idea. Percolating. When I got there, I'm moving and shaking. No, we've like, I'm, I'm going to say it. I got something I'm pretty fucking excited about uh -huh. in the in the works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you like this show, you're going to fucking love it. <laughs> like, I feel that confident about it. Like, if you like this show, you will love it. See, we showed up with a little bit of secrecy. Of this, we got we got our new our new set vibes, our new set aesthetic, and Jeremy's got a secret. And. If you like and subscribe right now, 
<laughs> and rate us five stars. If someone's still listening at this point, they've already liked and they've, they've like, already I'm gonna give you fucking three stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, um, we'll tell you more in January when we come back. We're gonna take a couple of weeks off. And take a couple weeks um, off. Go listen to Pretty Basic. Go listen to Unfiltered. Go listen to Harry Jowsey's podcast. Go listen to, well, go watch Chris Olsen's TikTok. Go watch any of our, our guests. Mm -hmm. They're all great. Um, but we've got some pretty, we've got some heat coming in the uh, top of next year. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy uh, holidays. Happy holidays. Happy New Year's. Happy, happy everything. Happy end of Vlogmas to me. It's currently day 14. So if we make it to day 24, 25, we'll be ecstatic. I hope you and your family have a wonderful holiday. I hope Jeremy loves his gift that's under $300. And I hope we're all thrilled on how I did with Lauren's not $300 gift on the 26th, if you post about it. And that our parents are, everyone's in one piece at the end of Christmas holidays. We love you all. Latvia, of course, you come first. <laughs> See you in 2023, y'all. Goodbye. Bye.